So let's talk about the Sanyaku guys and their performances. Um, we'll start with the Mongolian, the young upstart that is Hoshoru. Um, I mean, he's had better days, but he still managed to scrape out his Kachikoshi, which which was good. Um, what did you think he Hoshoru's performance this Basho, John? Yeah, it wasn't as impressive as he has been in the past. Agreed. But um, he pulled it out when he needed to. And um, it always, when they um, start to break new ground, it always is a bit a bit harder. Um, no doubt he'll get in trouble from an uncle. He does know what to do when, when it counts. Um, it would have been nicer for him to get a few more, but he, he knocked out his uh, eight wins. That's all you need, and uh, to at least maintain it there. Right. So, yeah, it was just yeah. such a wide open. I mean, it was a low scoring. Uh, you shot the twelve three, and and with the playoff, um, that's it's quite uncommon. But what it meant was there were so many clicking at their heels, and that's why people shouldn't get too excited about. It. The first few days and writing people off way too early, and then getting told they're wrong at the end, and then trying to double down, say, "No, oh, he doesn't deserve to be Ozeki," and all that sort of rubbish. But mm. they can only do their best. Each basho do their own brand of sumo. <laughs> well, usually, usually um, guys don't do that good in their first Sanyaku experience, whether it's nerves or circumstance. They usually don't do good. So it was good to see him at least get his eight and maintain his Komasubi rank. Mika, yeah. another um, newbie to Sanyaku, well, not really a newbie, but a returnee, and it was his first time at Sekiwaki anyway, Abby, who came storming back up the Banzuki. These last two Basho came second place getting a junior show. This Basho, hmm, except for on the last day, things worked out and my favour as a fan on what he done in the last day, but we'll get to that in a minute. In an overall scope, how did you find Abby's performance as a Sekiwaki? It was kind of underwhelming, especially considering how on fire he's been, but I mean, with his style of sumo, either you're going to be hot or you're just not going to be. I was... I honestly didn't think he was going to scrape that Katikoshi on the last day, um, but he did. So that was pretty swell. Um, and it is what it is. Yeah. Aye. Um, somebody else in Sanyaku who's losing it now and back down to Maegashira is poor Takanosho. He just mm. could not hang. He just could not hang this basho. And I really mm -hmm. felt sorry for him because um, as far as fa is projected to fans, he's a good, happy-go-lucky person that tries hard. Mm -hmm. And it was just, it was sad to see that situation unfold for him like that. Mm -hmm. um, now, see, before we get to the winner of the Basho, let's talk about our three Ozeki. Two in Kadoban this Basho, and one Shin Ozeki Metakiyumi, who performed mm -hmm. the best out of the three, ending with an 11. Mm -hmm. So that was really good. Metakiyumi, this question is open to either or either the two of you to jump in here. What did you find his performance was like as a Shin Ozeki? Because to me, I seen it as a powerful one. I, I seen it as nothing else but a powerful one. Although there was a couple of bouts he lost that he absolutely should have won. What do you think? He performed better than I thought he was going to be. Mm -hmm. I know I told John I didn't actually think he was going to scrape his Kachikoshi. Just because he's so off and on. He's a yo-yo. And he he's a yo-yo and he had Wait, I... so many good Basho in a row. I was just waiting for this to be his bad one. Mm. But I'm you know, pleasantly surprised. Right, no. Uh, so were we all. John, what's your thoughts on Mikakuumi, mate? Well, he's hopefully going to break the curse of the uh, uh university addiction you never get to <laughs> put up to um very uh, very high they get a couple get to Ozeki, so it was actually good to see him win 11, which is actually good for an Ozeki given um, mm -hmm. what we've had in the past. That's Aye. that is um, 
well, it's been as good as it gets <laughs> for right. him. Um, but yeah, he he has to shake the curse of being going hard, then going flaccid, going hard, then going flaccid. The less flaccidity, the um, the more the more wins. He just if he can maintain that consistency, hey, and, and just uh, use some staff sumo and just yeah. constantly drive forward, just. No matter how many that's times what got him, go back, that's go what forward. Got him to mm -hmm. And Aye. he managed to keep it properly. A lot of Ozeki in the past were like any other Sanyak, anyone making their Sanyaku debut, too many parties, too much celebration, too many mm -hmm. obligations. It gets Aye. a little bit overwhelming, but Aye. I think 11 4 is not, not too bad for him. So we'll wait to see if he can maintain. I would say November is a good scope of range to see how he's going to be as an Ozeki. Because, as you mentioned a wee minute ago when you were, when you were saying that there, John, the, the Ozeki of late have been very lacklustre. Um, Shodai especially. Takagesho is he's a good, he's a solid Ozeki, but he's so injury prone nowadays because he, his body, mm -hmm. his body type and his style of sumo that mm -hmm. I don't see him having a very long career or a long one at Ozeki much longer, although he's been kind of consistent and all right, I don't see it lasting much longer and I realised that Shodai got a 9 this special, mm -hmm. which was one more than Takakesho and that's fair enough but mm -hmm. see, even when Shodai does well, I just look at him and I just don't see an Ozeki and his sumo, the way he carries his cell, right up to his facial expressions. And you know, Mika, um, you have been nodding your head at some of the things I mm -hmm. said there, so I would love to let you jump in here and give your opinion, mate. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go actually back to Takakesho. Go for it. Um, so after he beat uh, Kotonowaka, uh, there's footage of him walking down the Hanamichi, sucking his right uh, pinky, and then afterwards hitting the wall. So there's a moment of anger after he beat Ta uh, Kol uh, Kotonowaka. And mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of speculation because, I mean, what, what else do we do during a Basho? But there's a lot of speculation that he actually possibly, being as injury prone as he is, possibly injured his right hand. And that is mm -hmm. why we saw his decline on the last four days. I don't know if I buy it, but he seemed pretty angry for just winning. So, uh, just wanted to mention I, that. No, I remember that bit. Um, and, you know, I, I took that completely differently. See, when he walked back and punched like, hurt that locker, I mm -hmm. took that as, like, yes! Like, oh! Like, sort of, like, do you know what I mean? Maybe I completely picked that situation mm -hmm. up uh, wrong. Because even though I was watching, I didn't notice him nursing his finger too much. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he, he was suck, sucking I, his uh, pinky, and then, then he hit the wall. Okay, question to our listeners then. What do you guys think? Was Ozeki Takakesho mad about his injury, his finger? Or was he hyped that he'd just won and secured his Kachikoshi and got himself out of Kadoban? Or did you see it in a completely different way? Leave us a comment and let us know your thoughts. That, so, that makes people wonder if I, um, well, that's what the Skibito were there to do. <laughs> he's own. That's, that's that's why he was angry. <laughs> Fucking hell! Right. Oh. Shodai and Takakesho, mate. What, what's your what's your thoughts on them? Uh, can you start with Shodai for us? Well, Shodai, yeah, he is inconsistent, but he does know what he's doing and even Hakuho gave him a bit of respect he was scared of his touchy eye which can be pretty good at times that's why we had that controversial one where he he started Hakuho started way back at the the edge of the Tawara so he didn't have to have to um put up with the devastating touchy eye that he can have from time to time um and people are saying he's, he's suffering from general depression and that he should be demoted from the rank and and things to recover his lack of fighting spirit complete rubbish that ozeki is the best place to recover from anything with your get out of jail free card Aye. and uh, he's not cut anymore despite what mr double down says on uh, facebook so he's yeah he's back up with a clean slate 
Mm. And um, he got a talking to from from Hakaku that uh, told him to pull his finger out and it seemed to work. I forget what day that was. That was a few days before the end of the Basho. But yeah, he, he's, got to, he's got to get those wins at the beginning. The, the funny thing about all the bouts at the beginning, they have a lot of high level matchups and that I've always been told was to stop the cheating, the opportunities towards back scratching at the end of the, the tournament. And it's also putting them against some of the new Sanyaku who aren't expected to win against Ozeki and things. So yeah, that that's part of it. And if you can't string together those wins at the beginning, which are meant to be a little bit easier, then you're in a lot of trouble towards the end. But luckily he was able to even give himself some breathing space and make the Basho more exciting despite the criticism he generated. I oh, mean, I that's a fair and interesting view. Aye, fair enough. Let's talk about Koto Nowaka. Let's discuss him for a minute because he was chasing the Basho leaders the whole time and only lost out on his chances in the last couple of days. Now, I, I don't think that it would be hard to guess that he is definitely going to be chapping the Sanyaku door and probably a mainstay there for a while. Um, he comes for a good breeding stock of sumo. He comes for a, a really strong hair um, in Sadogatake. So, and he done really well and literally missed out by a wee ball here this time. So, Mika, what, what's your what's your thoughts on, on young Kotonowaka? I mean, I think you nailed it. I mean, he comes from a great stable. I mean, just in, you know, just looking at the recent people in his Heia that have done well. I mean, we got Koto Shoho back up in Makuchi now. He got his Kachikochi after being gone for a while, after getting injured. I mean, that's the only reason he fell down to Jiro, though he did stick down there for about a year before finally getting back up. But I, I think he's going to do well if he keeps this up, as long as... He keeps up his aggressive sumo because he's had phases where he's been more reactive versus the aggressor. And when he's more reactive is when he kind of fails and stumbles. But he's really, really picked up the more aggressive sumo the last few Basho. Uh, he definitely has. I, I can agree with that. So, guys, let's talk about what we're really here to talk about. The, the just the amazing triumph of Wakataka Kage, pulling that Yushu out of, well, I mean, you could see out of nowhere, but he was a mainstay the whole time as well. He was one off the mark the whole time. He was tied at the top at times. Do you know what I mean? He went into the mm -hmm. last day tied, finished mm -hmm. the last day tied, and had to go into a playoff. His dogged, and I, I know I keep using that word during this podcast, but, but it's true. They were all fighting like rabid dogs. Do you know what I mean? Like we pure veracity because they all wanted to really fight for their place. Wakataka mm -hmm. Kage was just next level sumo. Towards the end of the Basho, he seemed to level up on his, um, I would say, aggression. Because I think that he seen that the end was near and that he could really, really do this. I don't think anybody else expected him to actually pull it off towards the end. I think everybody believed that this was Takayasu's time. It seems to be that Takayasu is is an amazingly strong and powerful and well adept Mikishi that he is. He always seems to do his selling injustice right as he gets a chance. And the saddest thing about him losing out in the playoff to Wakataka Kagi this time, I think, is I'm unsure if he will get an, uh, another opportunity like this to be able to get a Yusho. Um, but both men performed like like I've never seen I've never seen Takayasu fight so well either that I can remember of, of in the last couple of years anyway. Um, what was your thoughts on Wakataka Kage's performance, Mika? I mean, you you know that I've been a Wakataka Kage fan for a while, and so seeing him just so on point this Basho was pretty exciting. I didn't actually think he was going to get the U show. <gasps> I, I know. I know. Blasphemy. 
I know. I, I thought it might actually finally be Takayasu's time, despite his history of doing very well until the very end, and then not quite getting there in the mm -hmm. end. So, but I thought maybe, just maybe, you know, it would be it would be his time to shine. But instead, Wakataka Kage just came in and did what he needed to do and was spectacular. That I... how, that last bout, his playoff bout. Mm. John, that playoff bout, mate, it was it was tremendous, was it not? I mean, when his knee went to buckle and he managed to keep his leg off the ground, turned to the side, as you were saying earlier, John, um, when you had mentioned this, that he, when he had turned at the last moment, grabbed the back of his Mawashi and helped him on his flight. It was yeah. just it was just amazing, mate. What's, what's your thoughts on, um, even if you just want to talk about the playoff bout now? Well, one, and, of, one of the advantages that Waka Takakage has is he can see the ground he can see where he is mm -hmm. and that makes a difference to his ring sense a lot of what i've noticed is a lot of bad habits from all of them standing up too high forgetting to stay down too low some of them nearly had the bouts won and then they decide to pull and help the other guy push them back to the other side of the ring but Wakataka Kage is bendy enough to get out of the way. And um, that's when Takeyasu can pull out um, some really good sumo, he was uh, quite often he was dominating mm -hmm. um, against his opponents. And then they were trying their hardest. And he would just sort of wait for his time to unleash a big um, Watanage or, or um, an, an arm, arm throw and just twist them down but where he came unstuck was well which he does quite often is he gets over excited and he becomes the victim and loses Aye. his um loses his center of balance underneath him and Aye. for for wakataka kage just do that little ballet move and especially with almost almost with the knees touching everybody's uh, heart was stopping we just we're all in the moment we forgot there was a there, there used to be Yokozunas and <laughs> right. things, and it was just such a fantastic end, and it's such a brilliant story. Um, mm -hmm. He's he's such a nice, humble bloke, the youngest of three brothers. Um, I'm still not quite sure about what the uh, the lesson of the three arrows is. <laughs> mm. I have to look it up. But he he stayed on, went to um, went to university, and uh, and then they their stable was washed away with a by a tsunami so it was his destiny to eventually win a uh, yusho but we didn't expect it to come so soon right mm -hmm. right and and i think i know i have made a i made a video about wakataka kagi's um rise tea winning a yusho and see while watching him this basho and watching his bouts I, I just kept thinking of Chiyuna Fuji. See the aggression and some of the technique that he used and the fact that he's becoming extremely muscular in his upper half. So he is. And that's obviously uh, Arashio Oyakata has his guys do a lot of weightlifting. Um, he uses that as a, a really, really large part of their training. Uh, and it's paying off. It's paying off for his brother as well. I mean, I don't know. I don't know about his oldest brother yet, but I know obviously Wakamoto Haru. Um, he's up in Makuchi now as well. So I mean, who knows? Who knows? Mm -hmm. I mean, Wakamoto Haru. He got up to Makusha thirteen this basho, but unfortunately, he got a three four. So he is heading back down a little bit. So he's a while yet, if ever, to finally get up to Sakitori <laughs> with his two brothers. Mm -hmm. No, no, yeah, Waka. Taka Kage was very, very efficient with his career. He, mm -hmm. Less time wiping bums. Mm -hmm. he, mm -hmm. um, he, he, I dare say it, he's a bit smarter than the others. Uh, and he's... He came in with his Sundamme Skedashi, which meant he could jump mm. in a hundred, which Aye. puts him a year or two ahead of the mm -hmm. others. And then he's been very efficient. I on think. His way up. I think on the list, including guys um, who started in, uh, like, Makushta and that, uh, I think I was reading the day, I need to double-check this, but 
but he's like sixth on the list a fastest climb for joining yeah. mm-hmm. pro sumo to getting your first U show. I think it's like a 31 basho, but it's technically only 29 because two of them he had to sit out through no choice of his own <coughs> um, due to COVID, one being that his whole hair contracted the virus. And before that, there was a tournament cancelled because of COVID anyway. Those were the two that make up number 30 and 31. So 29 Basho that he took part in, it took him to fight his way up to getting a Yushu, which I just think is tremendous, especially for a guy his size. It's just something to behold for, for everybody. 